Welcome to John Michael's Rockbox. I'm your host, John Michael. I get to host this show that, well, it's a show about you. If you're a musician, if you're a solo artist, if you're a painter, uh, if you write books, your dance club, well, I'd like to hear from you. Send me your information to jmrockbox at mcaet.org. All right, we'd like to hear from you, and somebody will get right back to you. Now, also, if you'd like to watch the show, simply go to mcaet.org forward slash watch, and you'll see all the variations on how you can watch the rock box. And while this show really wouldn't last without you, so we do definitely need your donations, and visit mcaet.org forward slash donate. We'd like to welcome you to the Rock Box, and with that being said, let's head on over and meet our guest, and welcome to the Rock Box. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Rock Box. I'm your host, John Michael, and well, today, it's going to be a great, fun show today. Today, I'm, uh, I've got a very a multi-talented, multi-faceted guest today. Her name's Jacqueline Cabot, and uh, mm -hmm. Jacqueline, welcome Thanks. to the show. Thank you, and That's you pronounced my last name right, so I, know. I like you already. <laughs> hey, 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 hey <laughs> study right. these things. Uh, so good, I'm glad to have you. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having I, me. I found uh, Jacqueline, actually I've seen, we're Facebook friends, and um, uh, we have mo mutual friends, and so uh, our mutual friend, I happened to ask, you know, maybe we should have Jacqueline on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here and, you are. and here I am. Yeah. So, and and yeah. why why is Jacqueline here? Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Well, I, I introduced you as multifaceted, multi talented. Mm -hmm. Well, so all these things you do. Mm -hmm. oh, I, what is your primary? I would say uh, comedy. Comedy. I've been involved in all aspects of comedy for sure. 17 years. I lived in New York for 17 years and just wow. moved to the area about right. uh, a little less than a year ago. And this community has totally embraced me. And I'm doing everything I love. I'm teaching stand-up comedy. Uh, I am performing it. And another nice. thing that I do, I love you musicians. I love you musicians. Right. And I think we have great mutual respect for each other because I think what you do is the hardest thing yeah. in the world. And you might think what I do is the hardest uh, thing. I can do it. And I think comedy is music. It uh, is. So I've always appreciated that. So just organically, I have been producing some house concerts at the ranch that I'm living at in Aromas. Right, right. Which has been just great. Well, that's it's good. Great. Yeah. That's very good. It's a comedy yeah. comedian, and, and she teaches. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to really get into a lot of this uh, because you do help people, uh, or at least teach them how mm -hmm. to do stand up. Mm -hmm. Which, okay, one of the things is I'll, I'll ask this in it now, and then we'll, of course we'll get more into depth. Mm -hmm. Standing there <laughs> uh, in front of your crowd, you know, of course you don't want to see me sweat. Mm -hmm. And, and and to practice, what is usually a, a skit last? What's your, what's the average? A bit, as we bit, call yeah, it, in, okay. in the biz. A bit. Uh, I, you know, it's it's really all co uh, contingent on what you're talking about. But I would say on average, maybe maybe two to three minutes. And it's it's all about writing because you want each bit with a very strong point of view, sure. segueing into the next bit, right? And sort of the you know the music element to it. And uh, it's just as, it needs to be tight. It needs to be sharp. You want to get the audience into your head. And one of the secrets is, do you know I've actually never been heckled? And knock on wood, you can. Really? The secret is the audience really wants you to succeed. And my background is, is comedy okay. improv. Amy Poehler was my teacher. I did some things okay. with Second City. And the big world of improv is about making your partner look good, making people look good. So with Stand up if you go on stage right away and let the audience know, like, hey, I love you, you're great, you're this, you're that, then they're on your side. I don't think people should be huh. afraid to sit in the front row. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, I don't want to be too close because they're going to pick on right. me, you know, they're going to make right. fun of me. I yeah. don't like them. I don't like you right. already. Yeah, you know what? That's not why I go out to be made fun of. Right. There are so many other ways to make that happen. So it's not going to be when I go to a comedy <laughs> uh, show. So I'm pretty, I'm, I'm aware of that. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that kind of leads, I mean, we've got a lot of fun things we're going to discuss <laughs> uh, in writing down your average two minutes. Yeah, uh, and, and that's, do you cheat sheet? Do you, is it Sometimes, all memorization? Uh, you know, you really do need to have it uh, planned out. I, you can have a, a word, a, a phrase. Right. Sometimes on my hands, I'll put the 10 bits with the keyword. But it's all about practicing and hitting the open mics and tightening your material. That's really the only way that you do get better. 
you do get better. And in the, one of the biggest faux pas is in a comedy show, you don't want to go over your time. So for example, if I'm part of the show with 10 other comedians and we each have 10 minutes, what I rehearse for, and again, this is why you hit the open mics, is for eight minutes of material. Because I just assume two minutes of it's going to be uproarious laughter. Right, <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So I was just going to ask you, so are you, are you doing uh, anticipating filler and pausing? And well, I, uh, luckily, my, my strength is improv. So if I need to do something off the cuff, I can do it. But for the most time, you, you, for the most part, you do need to have a skeleton of everything you're going to say. Okay. It, it helps. So uh, uh, I guess you now you've done, besides comedy, mm -hmm. which uh, we're going to do a clip mm -hmm. of you, is warming up a crowd? I warm up crowds. I MC. And MC is great because it's sort of a combo of right, stand up right, right. And, uh, and improv. The clip that we're going to see is I was hired to, it was an eBay marketing event okay. and that was filmed at AB Studi ABC Studios in Manhattan. And I'm warming up the crowd before this game show hosted um, by Mario Cantone. Mm -hmm. I don't familiar with him. He's a comedian. And I'm warming up the audience who came in there to see it. And it's sort of like a let's make a deal type of parody show. Okay, well, yeah, let's, so should... let's watch Jacqueline now and, uh, as she does her uh, warming up the crowd bit. Warming up the crowd. And then we'll come back and we'll have a, more of a chat with Jacqueline Cabot. <laughs> Thanks for joining us at the Rock Box. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Let's Make a Deal. We got lucky. I mean, we really had no like bad seats in the bunch. Fifteen shows. We're so glad to have you. All you guys, all big eBay shoppers. Yay! And what was the last thing that you bought? A T-shirt. And how much did you save? Uh, I say three dollars. Three dollars. Okay, you get half a latte with that at Starbucks next door. Great. Like the little hair, the little hair on your chin. Do you get it on eBay? You can get facial hair on eBay. That is how good it is. So what brought you here today? How do you find out about this event? You can have it on Facebook. Great. How many friends do you have on Facebook? You want to stand over here, that's fine. Do you want to do Do you know all of them? That's good. I have to delete some friends from here. I wasn't feeling it. Do you know the Jonas Brothers? He's like, no. No. Um, you know what? Uh, is that Jonasy enough for you? He's like, absolutely not. Can you dance? introduce our host. We are so excited to have him, but he gets a drum roll from a synthesizer. Mario Canto! So eBay's doing something right now, so keep up the good work. Well, welcome back to the Rock Box, and I'm sure you haven't left yet, but now, <laughs> there you go. Now you, now you can kind of see what it's like to warm up a crowd. I had no idea, warming up a crowd. Now, I've seen, you know, every once in a while on TV, they show, um, like, the uh, say, say Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have the, they come out, okay, today we're going to, blah, you know, mm -hmm. everybody, everybody feeling good? But you're the person that comes out and warms mm -hmm. them up before everything else really starts. How hard is that? It's to me, it's fun. Like, and you'll see this in the stand-up bit. I'm a, I'm a Jew from North Carolina, mm. where I'm hosting all over the place. I love it. Right. And I, I, my theory is, people are coming to a party. You want them to make feel. You want them to feel comfortable at your party, and that happens right at the very beginning. And it just keeps the energy high for the entire ch for the entire show. Yeah, okay. So, so is this scripted? Is it? 
-hmm. is it timed out? They say like, Jacqueline, you have two minutes. We need you to bring them up or, you know, make it's, them, is it? It's case by case. Is it? it really is case by case. I'm pretty intuitive when it comes to people and sort sure. of sensing the energy in the room. Does it need to come up? Does it need to come down? Does it need to feel more collective? So I got free range at that and have fun with that. Is that something you practice then for I the warming up crowds? I think I practice it just in my everyday life. Everyday life? life? Yeah, I'm pretty aware of, of what's going on around me. So if you see Jacqueline somewhere and she's working a crowd, she's just practicing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's different if I'm working with theater students or corporate people. Sure. One of the things that I do is I go into companies and I do comedy improv team building workshops. Okay. Yeah, I've studied with Amy Poehler. I worked right. with Second City. So I'm, I, that's really my original background is in improv. And that's really served me in stand up because I make the audience look good. They they want to they wanna play. They do. The, the, as far as the improv workshops that I've done with corporations, a lot of these people are just latent artists. Artists, they're trying to reconnect with that part of them that was sort of stripped away from them as sure. they got older. And you're, you've been doing it your whole yeah. life, you get that, but when you see someone who just hasn't expressed that authenticity and that part of them that is just screaming. Right. They're point, they just, there's an amazing point of views out there. Sure. And it's just amazing seeing these corporate, these corporate people have the opportunity to connect without judgment, be in the moment, and just have fun together. And they look different within a couple minutes. I mean, that's the thing with experiential work. It's like you, they, my students look different. They're glowing. They're right. connected. And then they, I get emails sometimes that, you know, you know, since I did your class, I went skydiving, or I went, I got that divorce. I was brave enough. Right. Yeah, I feel yeah. weird about so that. Is that a confidence builder that makes, then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, it, I, I think that with teaching? my workshop, you know, I teach it as a healing tool at the Omega Institute and the right. Esalen Institute up here in Big Sur. Uh, if they can take it home with them, absolutely. Absolutely. I think my workshops, when I do the improv workshops and right. stand up things, it's not a temporary workshop high. You keep it with you. It stays with you. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, because I think one of the hardest things for a lot of people is to stand up in front of anybody and mm -hmm. talk about anything. You know, like mm -hmm. well, when I was in high school, for example, mm -hmm. the first time I ever had to stand in front of a, a crowd is debate. And just like, uh, oh, yeah. You, just, you know, like somebody is squeezing a lemon in your mouth, just puckers. Oh, it's, it's so, absolute, but you got through it, I yeah. imagine. I mean, yeah, hey, look what tough. you're doing now. It obviously worked in some capacity. Right. And uh, yeah. So so you, you kind of teach them how to overcome yeah, it's a, it, well, it's got to be so confidence. I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. There's also it's it's the fear of crowds. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're living at a time. I, it's, I connect with. We were talking about this earlier. Love the love the singer songwriters, and we're in an interesting position where we can be on stage and really really speak the truth and right. get our point of view across. And if it's coming from a sincere, genuine space. People really appreciate it, and by you making that choice to be in the moment to share through music or through comedy, right. you're giving people permission to do the same. Right, right, right. And it's a time in the world, you know, people are trying to make sense of things. I think music and comedy are the most palatable healers out there. I want to see them together more. I've been emceeing, well, not emceeing, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess you would call it emceeing, some music shows where I come on in between the acts to keep, right. the, to keep it in the flow. Right, right, right. So there's just uh, one production element to it, which is great. So, I, I, and this is very intriguing, this is very good, and I think that people will probably, uh, I think we've enticed them, their curiosity at least, to, so. to, to know what it is and where it is that you uh, teach and where they can find you. So mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. let's let I'll, you. I'll tell you. Well, first of all, uh, Jacqueline Cabot is my name. K A B A T. My website is JacquelineCabot.com. Another thing too is I have a very big social media presence, which has gotten me tapped into this community very very fast. Right. And this community on the Monterey Peninsula has just embraced me. So thank you. I I love it here. I, I was on my way from New York to L A. Stopped here. Right. To visit a friend and. Decided this was a better fit for me. I think oh. there is a renaissance happening here. Yeah. I truly, I think there's something really, really special. So mm -hmm. feel free to friend me or find me on Facebook, uh, Jacqueline Cabot. Check out my website, JacquelineCabot.com. I'm teaching stand up now at uh, Manny Espinosa Studio in San City. Okay. The next workshop is the weekend of November 14th and 15th, and it's an intensive 12 to 5 both days. 
and I'm kind of going to continue to be doing the emceeing at events, uh, right. teaching the comedy improv corporate workshops, doing house concerts at the ranch that I live at, right. and just across the board. And I do one-on-one -on -one things too, one-on-one -on -one stand up. So if that's more your speed, that's a that's an option. So yeah, I think uh, honestly, uh, this the things that you're teaching now. Besides, do you teach them? Besides the confidence that you're, mm -hmm. you're you're instilling on a lot of your students, are you mm -hmm. teaching them uh, it, it, the comedy art? Like you know, because I know mm. you know how to stand, oh, how to yeah. look at a crowd, from how to from how to hold the mic, from using your you know the pauses, just like in music, those Didn't are so powerful. Oh yeah, from from using the stage, from eye contact, looking into the audience, and across the board, physicality. You know, when your arms are crossed like that, you're not open to anybody. Right. And yeah, so physicality has has much to do with it. So the hands in the pocket kind of thing. That's yeah, a, that's well, a nervous tick. It's a little bit of a. You want to be open. You're sharing your heart. So physicality is the first clue to if you're actually really doing it. Yeah, because that, that was, yeah. was you know I was always curious about those kind. Of, and you know mm -hmm. I watch a lot of these comedians and. Mm -hmm. Uh, from an artistic point of view, I guess. Mm -hmm. Generally, people just look, and they don't know that they're looking and pay attention how an, an artist, a comedian, will make them feel part without scaring them away. Yeah, it's, you know? it's, it, there's such an awareness yeah. element. You know, it, much again like music, comedy is all about word economy and sure. you know this time, this day and age, people want the point fast, boom, boom, right. boom. I always say like, why read the book if you can get the pink information from a pamphlet. So it's really about you know choosing your words right. wisely. Seinfeld's really the master at that. Really? Word economy, if you really watch him. Yeah. yeah, he's excellent at that. And I have to say, my very first stand-up show in Manhattan, he came in. The big comedians will just go on and can go on stage whenever to practice sure. material. So he was practicing for oh, one cool. of the late night shows. So he went on and went on right after me. So technically, I've opened for Seinfeld. How about that? Good point, huh? Oh, She's open up yeah. her side. Though. Yeah, that's how badass so, I am. There's a lot of people that can do that or say that. <laughs> exactly. But that, that is cool. So, all right. So there's that, the pauses. The pauses that, you, you know, you say blah, blah, blah. Mm hmm Before you really hit them with the, your exclamation point. How, it's rhythm. How important is that? Is it well, okay, I, so a rhythm I think, then? I think, I, think it, I think it's mixing it up, you know, much like writing and music, kind of the rules of three. Da 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 Like you want it, you, you can punch it at the end. And I always say, if you think it's going on too long or it's not, it, if it's not authentic to you and not feeling right, don't do it. And uh, Bill Hicks was one of my favorite comedians. Mm -hmm. He passed away in the early 90s. I think right. he was a real prophet, like like George Carlin. And yeah. he has this thing, you can find it online, like the 12 principles of comedy. And one of the first rules is, you know, you are in control up there, is don't ask the audience how you're doing, tell them how you're doing. And, and if you can't oh. make it funny, at least make it interesting. Right. And keep it current, keep it current, where you are at this moment. What, my voice is different than what I did three years ago. Sure. I've grown up, allegedly. Hmm. Yeah, we all <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I remember starting off with the radio. It wasn't yeah. always, yeah. That was, it was the high, high, like, how'd you get that voice? It was a lot of, uh, well, I can't say it. You can't yeah. say it, but it was real at the time. And yeah. it's kind of nice to have that on, uh, you on the you records. Mature. You mature. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, well. Okay. Uh, so, is there some sort of little tip that you can kind of give them now? Uh, just a little something that maybe they could try at home before they call you up or look you up online. I look up. Um, you, know, like, you know, I honestly, what I say, the tip is, is just call, <laughs> because I anyone who shows up in my class, I know is already brave. That's the hardest part. What I'm very cognizant that it could be perhaps a little daunting to go to a class, be funny, right. and if you're, if you, once you show up, just show up. And I think showing up is a great concept. Show up for yourself, show up in life, and the rest takes care of itself. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, you know what we're gonna do? Is we're gonna watch Jacqueline do her stand-up, mm -hmm. and you'll get an idea of everything she's talked mm -hmm. about. And then, of course, you find her uh, on her websites. And uh, thanks for hanging out to Rock Pox. And man, we're ready to see this. I'm ready to laugh. Right. You this, ready to laugh? Yeah, Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. It's from a few years ago, one of the greatest clubs in the country. Jacqueline Cabot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Please give it up to Jacqueline Cabot, everybody. Thank you. Give your mic. You are in the basement. You are in the basement of the best comedy club in the country. So congratulations. Oh, I'm going to I like your Cosby sweater, sir. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Would you? I'll wear it later, sir. You know how it is. Hey, guys. I know I'm going to wear it later, sir. You know how it is. I know what you're thinking. Uh,
another tall blonde Jew from the South. Another one. Any uh, Southerners here? Where are you from? Texas. Okay, that's the real South. Sometimes people say Florida, but that's North Cuba. So we have a <laughs> Any Jews? Yeah. yeah. So you've never helped anyone move. <laughs> we don't do that or fix anything. Yeah, so being a Jew from the South, I'm kind of caught over here. Uh, I come from a place where people are anti-Semitic, but they are absolutely lovely about it. <laughs> You'll hear things like, <clears throat> you know, the Holocaust never happened. Would you like some sweet tea? <laughs> nice. I'll tell you this, um, someone right here, uh, when she was 10 years old, was in the Greensboro, North Carolina uh, Jewish community version of Fiddler on the Roof, and I was Russian number five, <laughs> clearly um, quite the actor, and um, let me just, just tell you the way it went down. We went, um, me and all the Russians, we pillaged the town, we like threw a chair basically, and uh, <laughs> the leader of us, he's like, Tanya, you best be leaving in a Tufka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I am single, I am single. <laughs> There, and uh, <laughs> I love you. I like, want to wrap a bow around you and take you home with me. I'll put you on my mantle next to my grandfather's urn. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the deal, guys. I am single. I'm, I'm okay with it. I actually am. It's, it's actually a better scenario for me right now. Uh, but the thing is, I haven't been single in a while, so that means I have to go out into like the being set up thing again. And let's face it, when our friends set us up, they kind of suck at it, right? Horrible at it. I mean, a few years ago, I think I, I dated a Mr. Nebishi Jew. Um, Mr. Uh, can I have your Xanax because I want to hang on to mine. And then... Uh, <laughs> and also, uh, even though I'm married, I am a fan of dating. I'm a fan of dating. <laughs> And I, the worst was my friend, she's like, I got a guy, he's in a band. And let's face it, women, guys in bands are kind of hot, right? Really sexy. Not a mariachi band. <laughs> and there are really only a few careers in the arts that aren't sexy, and that's pretty much at the top of the list. Uh, closely followed by ventriloquist and revolutionary war actor. <laughs> But I do have to say, my type, I dated, I dated a guy um, a while ago, and he looked like Jesus. And I do have to say, that's my type. Like, I like the, I like the scrub, I like the sandals, he throws dinner parties. And... <laughs> <laughs> and I picture meeting him, and it would obviously be where he works, with, you know, a health food store in Seattle. And i go in, and I was like, see JC, and I'd be like, hey, where's the echinacea? And he'd glide me over to the aisle, and uh, we realized there was, there was this connection. And uh, we, we decided to go out for a green tea, gluten-free muffin. <laughs> and, and he really starts to open up to me, which, you know, ladies, we like it when they get vulnerable. And he tells me, you know, walking on water, cool gig, good skill to have. Um, but it prevented him from fulfilling his true dream of becoming a professional scuba diver. <laughs> Pause for laughter. Anyway, uh, well, then basically he tells me who his father is and, um, you know, we fall in love. I chest bump him and then totally put out. But, um, actually, speaking of uh, chest bumps, ladies, don't you think, and I think guys would appreciate this, we should be doing more, like, women should be doing more chest bumps. Guys get to do it. Guys get like, you know the way it's gonna happen? When Oprah and Gail start doing it. When they start doing it, I'm telling you, chest pumping will sweep the nation. Um, a little bit of an issue with Oprah. I mean, it's because she's a star f***er, like, John Travolta, get her in the You know, she doesn't need to do that. I mean, she's already kind of at the top of her game, right? I mean, if she had a baby with Obama, it would be Black Jesus. <laughs> Or Bono. <laughs> so, uh, you guys, I know a lot of you are here seeing your friends who are comedians, and I'm sure some of you thought, like, wow, those comedians, they must be depressed. I mean, friends of the comedians, do you worry sometimes? We're not depressed, okay? However, uh, we do suffer from a debilitating anxiety that includes a lot of self-loathing, shame, and rage. But depressed, <laughs> not really. And it's actually, it's funny, 
funny because the people who will always be like, oh, the last uh, friend who asked me this, I was out in Long Island. It's my friend. She's married with kids, lives in Long Island. She's like, are you depressed? And she actually sounds like that. Beaker from the Muppets. <laughs> I'm friends with Beaker from the Muppets. Are you depressed? Uh, yeah, I was thinking, you should be depressed because, like, first of all, your husband's fucking around on you. I know this because he's hit on me. You're addicted to quaaludes and butter. And, and you say that your son um, has ADD, but you know what? Timmy's just an asshole. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not depressed. I'm a seeker. You know, we're all here. The life is purposeful, and we're trying to figure things out. And I did, try, I did go through a spiritual stage, but it uh, turns out I was just annoying. Uh, and what's interesting, I have been recruited by cults, cults, about 10 times in my life. It's like I'm wearing a shirt that says, I'm interested in joining a cult, just ask me. I'm going to have to talk to you about it. And I'm not into cults for a couple reasons. One is, uh, I think they're clicky, <laughs> like middle school clicky. And like, you don't want to go through, the, through that again. And there are these, like, you know, there are these cohesive social organizations of lost souls that prey on insecure people. Like the type of person who would read a book called I'm Just Not That Into Me. And, um, but however, I would like to start my own cult. My nickname is Jax. You guys are welcome to join. It's going to be called Jax's Cult. And um, really, it's not about mass suicides and offerings um, and things like that. We really are just going to kind of get high, uh, watch, you know, glee, and nap. Um, and I'll have a mug that says world's greatest cult leader and uh, it'll be a good time uh do you guys see that movie in 127 hours yeah if those of you haven't if you don't want if you don't want to see him cut up his arm see 126 hours yeah that was sort of tough sir i just i can't take my eyes off you anyways um i'm gonna wrap it up right now and uh tell you a little bit my, about my mom who would join my cult because my mom's from, you have to understand, she's a southern, like a gentry type of woman uh, from Charleston, South Carolina. That's where like, can I, you know Charleston? Yeah, yeah. So, I, are you, do you know South Carolina well? Yes, Charleston. Well, Charleston, well, you might have heard together. The rest of the state is kind of a waste of a state. Well, you know, in Charleston, women, women make love in Myrtle Beach, like, right. you know? So, mom is from, uh, she's from Charleston. In, and she, uh, you know, she's kind of like a Laura Bush neckerchief type of person. And, and I can't do anything wrong. When I was doing acting years ago, she'd be telling her friends, she's like, Jacqueline is doing some acting. She's an actor in New York. And uh, she, uh, she is doing a scene on a, a beach, a beach scene in the Greek Isles. It's being filmed in New Jersey. Um, and her friends probably be like, well, is she getting paid? No, mm -mm, she is not getting paid, but she is getting a free lunch. She will be eating for free. So these women are just a trip. And what I've learned from, um, from my Southern experience is you can say, bless her heart or bless his heart after anything so wildly inappropriate that evidently it's okay. So um, just hang